welcome back everyone. We were last seen traveling from Fianarantsu towards Andasibe National Park. Upon our arrival, we went on a night herping walk where we found many fascinating species of herpetofauna and invertebrates. In today's video, we're continuing where we left off back to camp for a good night's sleep before the following day's long hike through Maromiza Forest. The big question is, how much sleep is everyone going to get? As we'll soon discover that we have wanted and unwanted guests in our rooms. It's Dijon. Oh god. Get oh it up. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> it has an egg sack. Yes, I told you. I'm not doing anything with that. <laughs> no, you're here to get it. I thought you were exaggerating. No, I thought you were just like exaggerating because you just saw a little spider and you're no. being dramatic. It's like a huntsman spider yeah. thing. <laughs> I'm gonna use my hands. There's no way. Um, that thing will attack you. It has an egg sack. I'll put it in a cup. No, there's no way, dude. In a cup. I'm not sleeping here. You can't do anything with that. I got like, <laughs> oh. it no. moved. Fisherman. Sleep with me? That thing's gonna hatch, and you're gonna have like. Oh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> I mean, we're in the wilderness, boys. This is part of the experience that I don't have to deal with. Can I have a tent? <laughs> There's no hunting spiders in tents. Good morning. What's up? How you doing, man? Day 10. And? Infected toe, diarrhea. What more could you ask for? Injury. <laughs> I'm like, I have an injury. <laughs> injury. Well, you're right. Tomorrow is good. It's good mango. <laughs> At this place, we had some of the finest mango that I've ever had. So good. Succulent. Sweet. Perfect. Mango. Oh yeah. I would just eat it with my hands, but... Dan's not sponsored by Big Mangoes. Oh yeah. I won't get my hands all sticky yet. No Big Mangoes is good. <laughs> okay everybody, we're starting our first full day in the Sibe. We've just risen from the National Parks Lodging and wow, take a look over here. This is a female Furcifer Wilsey. This animal is gorgeous. Our guy just found these. There's actually a male we're going to take a look at in a sec. So you can take a close look at the sexual dichromatism as well as the sexual dimorphism between the two specimens. But this female and the male were actually copulating or mating for about half an hour before they separated. And what's interesting too is unfortunately won't be able to see, the female was exhibiting different coloration and she's become a lot darker now since. So she's sporting those vibrant, sort of more stressed colors that indicate that she is most likely now gravid and not interested in hanging out with any future males. But what stunning coloration. It's also fascinating to observe the animals moving along a branch and came across a few droplets of water on the leaf and she made a point out of stopping and drinking them before continuing which just shows you how these animals can be the masters of conserving water. I really love these smaller chameleon species we're seeing. What a delight. Let's take a look at the male now. All right everybody have a look over here. This is the male Furcifer we'll see. As you can see, he looks distinctly different than the female. First of all, the most distinguishing feature are those rostral processes over his face. You can see them there sticking out. A great way for him to attract the females, show off his stuff, make him look real nice and handsome for them. Clearly it worked because as I mentioned before, the male and female were copulating before we arrived. Our guide was patient enough to keep an eye on them so we'd have the opportunity to see them when we came along. Check out that white lip on this animal. It's such a beautiful contrast. And again, this is an adult chameleon. 
That's how big they stay. So this is a tree canopy chameleon, and they normally would be found in a deep forest habitat. But what we're around right now is more of a fragmented, reclaimed forest. There are a lot of invasive eucalyptus trees, and it kind of is a testament to how adaptable this species must be. As you may or may not know, deforestation is a very, very great concern in Madagascar. There are initiatives to help reforest the island, but at the rate things are going, it's not looking promising. So species that are able to adapt quickly and survive in habitat that wasn't thought to be conducive to their thriving are the ones that are for sure gonna make it. And this animal showed us today that it is adaptable. First of all, we'll see. Can't wait to see what else we're gonna find today. Yep. All right, everyone. I am so excited right now. We are about to go on a jungle hike to see one of the animals that I was most thrilled to see in its wild environment, Duabakoto, the Indri Indri. It is the largest remaining living lemur on our planet. Has a enchanting ghost-like call. Fingers crossed that we're going to see them. I'm so excited. Let's go. Although the temperature wasn't particularly hot, it was humid. And that humidity alone made the hike quite challenging. The air was heavy and humid, which didn't make it easy to catch your breath. And the ground we were walking on was muddy and uneven. Nonetheless, the climb is absolutely worth it, especially if we're lucky enough to find the target species we're after in this protected forest. Hello. Hello. Today, uh, the forest we visit are protected by local people in this area, in this village. This forest uh, we visit uh, is around 1,200 hectares uh, in list. And here is typical world uh, life, like uh, primates, uh, birds, Oh, Retail and amphibians, and then kind of a very, very rare plant also. So now we will do a hike at this forest. Our main goal try to find any chameleon, but maybe we will see a surprise animals during our hike. But we spend around three, uh, four hours minimum, minimum because the hike here walk always mura mura, sometimes step climb up so we need to walk slowly slowly and then uh, we have also here like a spotter guide like uh, two people over there is uh, working uh, together with us with Patrick and with me and Adrian to get easier to find animals at the forest and then to get a job for local people also if tourists come to visit the forest we have many people to guide you <laughs> yeah so mostly like that our hike this uh, morning. Are we allowed to fly drones? Can we fly drone? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yours truly. You? Yeah. I feel it. Yeah. Dijon, give us a... Give us a... What just happened? Well, we were just looking at a Parsoni Christopher, and I've been informed by the beloved Nadine that he found 
another fantastic It's just a bunch of dead leaves. He was mistaken. Oh you my can... goodness. Maddie, you're beautiful, man. Look at that gorgeous female. Oh, he... Oh, wow. Dude, how did you see that? <laughs> I don't know, honestly. That's insane. I wasn't even, like, searching. I was just walking by. It's a female. We made eyes. Get her, she's licking your nose. All right, everyone, Nadim is king today. He somehow spotted this incredibly stunning leaf tendril mimicking Europlatus fantasticus female. Look at her there sleeping under the dead leaf. This is the queen of camouflage today. I cannot wait to see what else we find on this hike. What a beautiful animal. Let's let her do her thing and snooze till nighttime. Again, see you like Bill, right? I was going to point this out again. See, look, it's not, it's like, you don't get the dirt. I mean, this is, yes, it's, but it's like, uh, organic. Right? Detroit? Yeah. Like, this is all roots. Like, it's then finally down here. Like, you think they, they don't even bother. I'm sure they just lay them there. I don't think they're going all the way down to the soil. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you want to tempt some of the soil down? Sure. We're checking the soil temp here, uh, right near where we saw the fant. And and that's Cibe. And that's Cibe. 18 degrees or 66 degrees Fahrenheit. For you guys incubating. Oh. Just for the sake of it, we'll even move away the leaf litter. Okay, 65. So there's your range, people. Nice. As I continued to walk down the trail, I did my best to scan over every plant, every clump of dead leaves caught in a branch, anywhere I thought a leaf-tailed gecko might be sleeping and hiding in plain sight. I can only imagine how many of them we walked by and didn't notice right in front of us. That's the Alec, thing. what do you have here? It's a small chameleon. What species? I'm not sure. Gastrotinia. Exciting. This is a very charming little chameleon, <laughs> and I think the uh, the age of the mini chameleons is starting. Yeah, and this is one of them. Is it a female? Appears to be, but you would know better. Than it's, uh, Assuming it's an adult. It's probably one of the smallest Kaluma species here that we're gonna come across in Andesibe, and she's absolutely stunning. We found her about a foot off the ground in some of the lower foliage, and as soon as we started filming her, she slowly made her way up onto this vine. Let's keep going and see if we can find those injury lemurs. So we found this beautiful gastrotania here, about a foot of foot and a half off the ground, and that's what we're looking at. 85% humidity, 22 degrees Celsius, 71 Fahrenheit, and it's 11 here in the dense jungle. Stunning. Okay, everyone, look right here. This is a handsome Kaluma Malte. This is one of those elephant-eared chameleons. You can see the rostral process over there above his nose. Unfortunately, this guy looks like he's been in a bit of a scrap. If you take a look at, well, you can't really see it from this side, but the right side there on his eye looks a bit banged up, not looking so hot, but I think you can still see through it. This is a gorgeous chameleon. He's putting up a threat posture, looked really dark before, but now that we have him on the stick, he's calmed down a little bit. So we're gonna let him be on his way and continue on because apparently the injury are out at the lookout point. Kaluma Malte, what an amazing chameleon, such a beauty. The Madagascar expedition is brought to you by Exoterra. Make your reptiles feel at home. Whether it's beautifully designed terrariums for housing your animals, feeding and nutrition, products that nourish your pets and help them find their food easier, substrates and habitat decor that allow you to create the most beautiful naturalistic looking homes for your animals, heating, lighting, and more. Exoterra has a wide selection of innovative products that allow hobbyists to successfully keep their reptiles. Exoterra makes it possible to cater to almost any species, 
from almost any specialized habitat. Thank you again to my friends at Exoterra for sponsoring the expedition of a lifetime. <clears throat>
It's no surprise that the Indri is often compared to a teddy bear. One of the most unique features that Indri possess is their ability to sing. They are one of the only primates in the world that do this. A recent study conducted over the span of 12 years proved that Indri possess a sense of rhythm. The only other mammals on Earth capable of this are humans. Its chant can be heard from a distance of approximately 4 kilometers. The group sings nearly 7 times a day, mostly from dawn to noon. The Indri's call is often used to help maintain the unity within a troop or family, but it can also be used as a show or sign of outlining territory between troops. Indri are highly social animals, living in monogamous, female-dominant groups consisting of three to five individuals, the adult pair, and their young. Studies have shown that Indri usually reproduce every two to three years, as opposed to other species of lemur, which often reproduce annually. After between four and five months of gestation, the Indri infant is born. It'll cling to its mother's belly for several months before graduating to her back, where the infant will spend six months or so staying there until it is weaned. The infant will continue to live with their mother until they reach two to three years of age, but will not be sexually mature until they are seven to nine years old. Unfortunately, according to the IUCN Red List, the total species population is estimated to be between 1,000 and 10,000 individuals. The species is currently classified as critically endangered. These primates have also yet to be successfully kept and bred in captivity. So it is of the utmost importance that humanity preserve their habitat if we wish for future generations to be able to appreciate and share a world with these incredible animals. All right, everybody, take a look at this handsome male Europlatus sicori. They've spotted a gorgeous Felsuma lineata climbing up this pillar. And so I tried to kind of coax it out into the open so that we could take a nice shot of him. And he ran up to the top here. And as I reached over the ledge to try and coax him out, this guy just came flying out onto my shirt. It's a male Europlatus sicori, like I said. And you may be thinking to yourself, where is his leaf tail? Well, that's where it started growing back because something out here must have spooked him or tried to eat him and he automatized his tail and made for the hills and lucky for him he got away and that tail will actually grow back over time it'll look pretty normal it'll look more smooth and have less of that bark texture to it but it should still get to be about that big over time the last few sequoia we saw last night on our night walk were much smaller. This is actually an adult sized animal. So Dave and I are fortunate enough to have gotten to see what the adult sequoia looks like, minus the tail. We'll put them back up here and keep going on our way. Yeah, that was super cool. Thanks, man. So there are four different categories of leaf tails, and this is one of the moss mimics. That's kind of a tongue twister. Mm -hmm. But you can see that this would completely disappear on a mossy tree. Mm -hmm. In plain sight. Such an amazing lizard.
Yeah, so we're checking the ambient temperature of where she was placed. We did kind of disturb her and she's walking away a little bit now, but it looks like an ambient of about 70% humidity, 75, 76 degrees Fahrenheit, or about 25 degrees Celsius. And when you measure the actual like true temp of the wood and the leaves, you're looking at about 72 degrees Fahrenheit or 22 degrees Celsius. Pretty, pretty interesting considering that it is a mostly closed canopy, but there is plenty of available sunlight to peer through these trees and warm up the area. So I ended up bringing my UV meter on this trip. And as you could tell, it's pretty much zero, 0 0.1. Uh, where she is, 0.2-ish, somewhere around there. So pretty low amounts of UV. There are a ton of things to consider when it says that, though. That doesn't mean you should just not provide UVB because you think about it, you look above us, it is still a fairly open canopy. While dense, not entirely enclosed, so there will be strands of light coming through providing a UV that we measured of about one, and that's really pretty much the only UV that they're going to be getting. Uh, most of the fans that we've seen have been about this height, so that tends to be pretty consistent measurements with Rana Mafana, and it's very cool seeing them here in Andasi Bay under similar conditions, yet a gorgeous female this time. I want a hog nose. Mm. High five, yeah. Mm. Hog nose. Diane? I can't just manifest one out of thin air. I would for you if I could. What we need is Adam's hog nose call. Oh, he has a gecko call. Let's go see if he can, he can provide it. But let's go find a hog nose. Okay. But look at this. I mean, look at this habitat. Disturbed habitat. Lots of grasses. Like, this is the scenario where we would find giant Madagascar hognose snakes. They're here, and we're going to find them. After completing a most successful hike and documenting so many interesting animals, it was time to get back home and eat a delicious meal consisting of, yep, you guessed it, zebu. But not just any type of zebu. This time, it was the zebu sizzling. Zebu sizzle. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, but I'm taking a footage for myself. Oh, okay. <laughs> no one will remember your legacy. <laughs> so there you have it, friends. After spending less than 24 hours in Andasibe National Park, it's more than evident that we are going to get to see so many incredible animals. Just wait until next episode when we go on our night walk. Thank you so much for watching everyone and see you next time.